No, this is a biplane <laughs> with about 110 horse of our power engine. <laughs> The Chow Telescope basically happened because I got a call originally from Ed Byers and then Alan Chow called me and asked if I could uh, consider automating this telescope. It was essentially a manual telescope back in 1998. And uh, I said yes and Alan and his brother came out and we talked about the project and then uh, started working on this and uh, it was a slow project, there was no big hurry but we basically got it done and, and uh, then I got it going and then I got a job offer at Google so I had to take five years off from this project and spent all my time working at Google and when I retired from Google started Las Cumbres Observatory in a very serious way and we've put this project back on the burner and now we've got it finished. I think if we want to be really accurate about it, it might be almost 14 years or something like that. It's a rather slow delivery cycle to put it mildly. Uh, we originally started back in the 1980s and uh, we had developed what was called a flat field Schmidt at that time. Uh, but because of the difficulty of casting the mirror, uh, producing a tube assembly and getting the right size mount, um, there were a number of delays. In the mid-90s, uh, we actually fabricated the uh, telescope tube assembly at Byers, then uh, created the mount. And, um, but by that time, the system was adequate, it was obsolete. I was referred to Wayne Rosing to see whether we can and modernize the telescope. There was no uh, pointing capabilities or go-to capabilities. And so uh, we brought the telescope to Wayne and uh, basically discussed with him what the possibilities are uh, for this telescope. And Wayne, through his magic, uh, converted the telescope to a completely computerized go-to system. A 0.6 meter telescope is actually quite capable. Um, it can look out half a billion light years for certain objects. Uh, it's typically going to be used for objects in the Milky Way, nebula, galaxies, star clusters, and some objects that are further away from the Milky Way called globular clusters that are satellites of our Milky Way. It could be used for both serious science and for very, very serious education uses. Uh, about two years ago, I went over to visit Wayne in Santa Barbara and we saw uh, what the scope was capable of and what uh, it was all about. And we really decided that it was inappropriate to put it in the Chicago area, area where I live uh, because the skies are so bright, you can at most only see perhaps 100 stars at night. So we thought that McDonald Observatory may benefit from a system like this. And Wayne uh, at that point indicated that there is certainly that possibility. So over the next two years, we uh, discussed with McDonald about its potential use in educating the public uh, to the wonders of the night sky and perhaps for research uh, kindergarten through 12 and perhaps as an integration into the LCOGT system uh, as the educational portal. And this telescope will be sort of the first of our telescopes that's going to be seriously used to support educational use and so presumably through McDonald people will have access to this telescope They'll sign up and be able to observe remotely, robotically, and then the data will flow through our system and then be made available to the users as it would for scientists or anyone else. Uh, McDonald Observatory and the University of Texas in Austin uh, funded 
uh, the location, the foundation, um, and uh, facilitated the installation of the fiber optic and the power system. Uh, Wayne and uh, Dorothy uh, from uh, LCOGT uh, funded the construction of the dome, uh, the power supply, and the commissioning of the telescope. Uh, so now it's finally July 2013. Uh, the scope is uh, basically operation now. And uh, we're just um, very happy that we're finally here at McDonald's. I want to thank Alan for his foresight to see that this telescope could be placed here at one of the finest, darkest spots in the country, in the continental United States. And it'll get used and it'll get appreciated and it'll communicate science to 60, 70,000 people a year. And that's, that's a really great contribution.